be quick with this intro because it's time to get up in the air. Check this out, a little windy. Um, tonight's gonna be really fun. So it's a little breezy right now, a little windy. I've got Brad Roper out here, steel gardener. Um, and we're about to go do a little bit of a cross country. We're gonna go fly to Tooele Valley and then fly on the west side of the Oakers. Right now we got high winds, we're waiting for those to simmer down before we go around the corner, but we're gonna go pop up and fly a little bit. Oh, who's calling me? Hold on, let me get this. Hey, this is Dom. Hey, honey buns. Anyway, so yeah, we're gonna go fly, fly to Tooele. As you can tell, it's kind of windy, flags are waving a ton, but it's supposed to trend down tonight and turn into a really good night. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll go from there. Brad the Roper, the man, the myth, the legend himself. You get into Dude, some trouble. You got to introduce us to that iris too. Oh yeah. He's already shown me, so I'm not gonna pretend like, oh, it's the first time I've seen it. But uh, the iris is pretty rad. Oh, also, I'll be flying the Kangook Amarok tonight. I'll show you a sneak peek at the Amarok. What's up, old Steel Gardener? Hello. Say hi to the YouTubes. Hello, YouTube. Good looking machine. It's brand new. It, it's brand new because steel doesn't fly ever. <laughs> Never. That's why it looks so nice. Just kidding. Steel, unlike all of us, takes care of his stuff. All right, let's take a look at this machine. So this is the Kangook Amaruk, uh, new to 2021. Differences on this machine right here is if you look at the engine mounting, it sits a lot closer to the pilot. And what that's supposed to do is decrease vibration, decrease the upward swing every time you throttle on, and then kind of help with torque. Um, I don't really notice though, because these things don't torque a ton. Uh, but yeah, really clean machine, really lightweight. So dry, it's 55 pounds. Uh, this is my second time flying it. So I'm gonna just feel it out and, uh, and get used to it. But so far I like it. So far it's been a lot of fun. And then over here, we've got Brad's, I think it's called an Iris. Uh, Iris out of the United States. Pretty slick machine. And then with the HE, which I think is out of Spain. So Brad's gonna have to tell you all a little bit more about that. I don't know much about this machine, just that it looks cool. I'm 
myself to the page. I don't do it for the praise, love. That's just how I'm made. Truth in the glass in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Do it at me, old man. Trying to pass in the fear. You're the first one to talk, but the last one to hear. Eyes blurry, but I couldn't see that. And he cleared down. Start to feel like I'm on one. Quick update, really quick. Got windy, put down. We're in the middle of the lake. I made Brad and Steel land with me just because I didn't want to sit alone. Yeah, this is called an Iris Infinity. Dimitri makes them out of Washington, and uh, they're all hand built here in the U.S. You choose your motor: Viterazzi, Sky Engines, Minari. This one has an HE. I wanted to try the HE. They're real cheap, and uh, they have a good warranty. So we're testing it out right now. But what lots of carbon fiber. What do you it's think a really, so far? Really sturdy paramotor. Like the craftsmanship is really good, a lot of cool features. A lot of small things you don't think you need until you have them and then you really enjoy it. Uh, the motor we're still figuring out. It's a little rich, so I'm not getting a ton of power right now, but it's just, about like a motor. Just so you understand, Brad, Southern Utah Paramotor, hard on his stuff. This man shreds, rips, tears. Uh, I've ridden in a Can-Am with him. That's, that's changed my life. Uh, I equate riding in a Can-Am with Brad to religion just moved me. These arms, what do they call them? Dynamic weight shift. I've never even flown one with it. It's... They give you some side to side movement as well as up and down. Huh. Yeah, it looks good, but how does it butt land? That's a good question. I haven't butt landed it, but it has some carbon spars in the rear. So if you do butt land, all you have to buy is this spar, which is 20 or 30 bucks, it's pretty cheap. And then all of the joints, if you land and break your hoop off, all these joints are very cheap and easy to replace. So that was all taken into account. They don't they don't call it a crumple zone, but it's kind of set up that if you land too hard, the cheap parts break first, which is cool. So. Dude, she's pretty. Piece of salt. Salt. Yeah, dude. Look at all that salt out there. I'm gonna go cook with it. Blowing down here. Yeah, I was getting, I was getting bounced. I was getting bounced pretty good. Yeah, I brought a straggler. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. If this area will calm down, it's gonna be insane.
right, so if you haven't noticed, we're not at Salt Air anymore. We're on the north point of the Great Salt Lake. Farthest point north you can get called Promontory Point, AKA Spiral Jetty. And uh, every time Brad comes to town, it's nuclear windy. Brad, AKA the Southern Utah Paramotor King. Made a poor decision to land. No, dude. And now we're getting blown all over. No, 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 good decisions, good decisions. I actually wanted, I was planning on landing. I wanted to grab some salt for some culinary needs. Hold those seeds, hold those seeds hard. Hang tight. So just, yeah, wrap, don't pull any pressure on the A's. Just hold those C's around your butt, yeah. Hang tight. Walking on the moon. So, you come down to foot drag this. I foot drag drug it once and just like broke my toe. Oh yeah, because that's straight up. shrimp and I don't think the brine shrimp can live in this. Live in south side. Yeah I think this is too much. Look at this. I mean that's that's straight up just that's just salt. That's wild. Never buy salt again. That's solid. Look at that. That's just that's rock. The direction looked good. It looked out of the rotor. For kinda. 